Hey everybody, my name is Rodney Dupree with Cajun Living and Cooking. And due to some of the tough times we have in our area right now, due to the coronavirus and the pandemic, uh, we won't be able to go film shows. So uh, we're going to ask for everybody to stay safe like we are. Uh, use your Lysol, clean up. Uh, we're going to air some of our older shows. And uh, we'll have our new commercials on it. And uh, everybody stay safe. Check out the shows. Like us on Facebook. But uh, thanks for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. Tideline, trout line, sitting on a pot line, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like the dead long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree, and today we got a treat for you. We're in Pier Park for the St. Joseph's the Worker Fair. Now this thing's been going on for over 45 years. They didn't even know exactly what day it was going. It's been going on so long, they got to reach back and talk to some of the older people to find out how long it's been going on. But what we got is we got a fair, we got music, and we got a Cajun cook-off. We're going to be cooking seafood. We're going to be cooking wild game. So stay tuned. Cajun Living and Cooking is coming on right about now. All right, y'all, I found two of the ladies out here that's helping put this on. They've been doing this for a long time. Let me get their names and where they're from. Joni Oquan from Pierport, Louisiana. Elrena Pondville, Pierport, Louisiana. All right, now we got a bunch of, this is early. All the cooks is out here getting things set up. Uh, the, the crowd hadn't got here yet. Now tell me a little bit about what's gonna be going on today out here. We're cooking some great old Louisiana food. Yes, yes. We got several cooks out here and, and that's not the only thing going on. I, I see we got adult refreshments, some cold beer out here. Yes, we do. We have fair, we got the fair going on. We have rods, we have bingo later, we got, um, some good bands that are going to be playing. We also have church. We have all kind of different activities for kids, adults, older people, everybody. A little bit for everybody. That's yeah, depending good. on what you want to do. Uh, it looks like the weather's going to be perfect out here. All right. Well, uh, now tell me, won't you tell me a little bit of the history about the fair and uh, what's been going on out here since this has been going on? Okay, first we started out with a crawfish jubilee years in, in the 60s, but that didn't turn out. We had it for several years. Uh -huh. Then uh, around the 1970, 71, we started with the church fair yeah. to raise funds uh, for the church so we could start with different projects and uh, just take care of our bills. Yes, and you was telling me most of the buildings built here were, were from funds raised from the fair. And, and in 45 years, I'm sure y'all raised a bunch of money out here. From the hard work of the community and the volunteers, the parishioners, the vendors, everyone that contributes, it's deeply appreciated. We have uh, some new buildings. We just renovated the church. Uh, we have a big church home. Yes, uh, yes. Religion building. It, it's just fantastic the turnout we have. Well, great. And, and the contributions. These cooks have been here since 4:35 o'clock this morning, making starting with their roux, and it, it's just fantastic. All right. Now we're fixing to get over there and start interviewing some of these cooks because I can smell the onions and the roux and everything filling up the air out here. And uh, one thing I want to mention about the the pier part it's a it's a i want to say a tight-knit community where everybody helps each other out and and stuff like this wouldn't be able to be put on without good people like that that's right everybody has a real close neighbor and if it's not next door it's still a close neighbor yes indeed well i'm gonna tell y'all thank you ladies for talking with me thank and you. i'm gonna let y'all get back to work and we're fixing to go see what those cooks got cooking over there and I want to thank y'all for joining us today. Well, thank you. We have the best cooks. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. All right, y'all. I'm over here with some of the cooks now, and the smell of this is just amazing. I'm telling you, just amazing. Let's see who we got here. Milk Metrogene. From? Grand Bayou. Gail Leonard from Pierre Park. 
All right. Now, what you cooking here, Milton? Uh, shrimp fettuccine. Shrimp fettuccine. It's an awesome smell coming out of there. And you said you got 15 pounds of shrimp in there? Yep. All right. Now, now, for people that don't know out there, can you give me a quick version on how to cook a shrimp fettuccine? Well, you start off with butter and put your onions. Then you cook your onion down for about an hour, and then you throw your shrimp in there. Uh -huh. When your shrimp is cooked, you add your half and half and your cheese, and then you add your noodles last. Okay. And then the whole process takes about how long? A couple of hours. A couple of hours? About uh, about a six-pack? <laughs> oh, probably a 12-pack. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, now how many, is this pot gonna be full? Uh, or three quarters. Three quarters yeah. full. That should make uh, about five, seven gallons in probably. Oh, huh? no, it'd be about probably 12 gallons. 12 gallons. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Well, all right, well, I'm gonna let you get back to cooking and uh, I definitely wanna try some of this later on. All right. Thank you, Mr. Milton, Miss Gale. But how you feel about it? I'm comfortable. Good as can be, huh? <laughs> think, we can get, think we can get a look at it? Yep, sure can. Ooh, now that looks good. That looks good. That's beautiful. All right, y'all, I got two more cooks here. Let's get their names and where they from. Uh, Davis O'Quinn from Pierreport, Louisiana. And Paul O'Quinn from Pierreport, Louisiana. Y'all probably just walked here right down the road then. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> he ran. Oh, okay, <laughs> I got you. Now y'all brothers? Yeah. All right, well y'all been cooking together a while? Quite a while. Well, cool. You got a big old pot of turtle sauce pecan. That's one of my favorite dishes. And you was telling me y'all didn't go out and catch the turtle. Somebody brought y'all some turtle meat. That's correct. Now, for the people that don't know how to cook a turtle sauce pecan, can you give us a little quick review on, on how to cook one? You got to cook a roux. Uh-huh. With this cooking oil and flour. And you put all your onions and all that good trash. In yeah, there. yeah, 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 all, yeah. All not the all the secrets. And then cook that onion down and you put water in and then make the gravy. Just cook that gravy down for uh -huh. a couple hours. Then you throw your meat in. Okay. And you just got to watch it. You add your seasonings. And you, as they cook, you taste it because your seasoning gets stronger as you cook it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you just got to make sure it don't stick to the pot. Take about four hours probably. To, four hours. At least four hours to cook this. Gotcha. Now, and how far are y'all along right now? Y'all in it a couple Ooh. hours, maybe? We in it right now, probably two, two and a half hours. Okay, okay. And that's a full pot you got there. That, yeah. What's a five or seven gallon? Ten gallon. Ten gallon. Gotcha. And uh, what's the secret ingredient you got in there? You said you can't tell everything. Then you put mushrooms and you put uh, everything. celery, Onions, celery and and bell, bell pepper and some parsley and everything. And just a little bit of Cajun love. The love, and that's probably what makes it right there, the Cajun love. Now, how many pounds of turtle y'all got in there? 30. 30 pounds. 30 oh, pounds. That's a lot of turtle. Starting to get real tender. Almost falling off the bone. Yeah. That's like what it you should want. be. So you feel good about it? We feel good about it. Hopefully. We, hopefully, gonna be number one again. You got it, bro. It smells great. Thank you. Thank y'all. All right, y'all, I got two more cooks here. Let's get their names and where they're from. Jamie Pineville from the great town of Pierre Park, Louisiana. Chauncey Pineville. From Pierre Park. From Pierre Park. Mm -hmm. And we got the quiet one here. And I yeah. bet you she's from Pierre Park, too. She's Jamie, too, yeah. Now, what are we cooking? What are we cooking? We got a crawfish stew we're cooking today for the cook off. That is a, you've done right with that brew because you got a good color going on right there. That's, that's a beautiful color, and the smell's coming out of there. It's really awesome. How many pounds of crawfish tails you put in? We got 10 pounds of crawfish tails. 10 pounds. And uh, you've been at it since early this morning. Well, I woke up late. We had yeah. a little uh, brother-in-law didn't wake me up out there. He was too scared of this competition here. He didn't <laughs> want any competition because he knew, he knows what's going to happen here on the outcome of it. I see a plan in there somewhere where, mm -hmm. where that happened. I think he kind of sabotaged my stew a little bit. I had to go change, so. <laughs> now I hear uh, this. The wife's the real cook right here. Now, uh, um, tell I'm, us. I'm, I'm only the assistant. Oh, yeah, only the assistant. Only the assi I serve pot. Assistant. Now, for the people that don't know, tell me tell me a quick overview on how to cook a crawfish stew. How to cook a crawfish stew. First thing you need is your wife to go and pick up everything for you. Okay. And okay. cut it up. Okay. And get everything prepared. And measure and bring it here for you. Okay. Start out with your roux, cook your roux, put your uh -huh. onions in, smother everything down, and you add your water. And then just let it cook. Just let it cook for a while, and then 
you add your crawfish, the last thing, just let it cook until you taste, yeah. taste it, add your seasoning, whatever you need, just to get it right. At the time, it's the time. Now, it's now the time. to you, what's your secret of to, that makes your crawfish stew stand out? Yeah, if I told you my secret, it wouldn't be a secret. Ah, okay. So it's okay. just a special recipe that we're using, and it's been around for a long time, so. You've been cooking the same <laughs> recipe forever, then. It's been around for a long time, and it's a special recipe. Gotcha, gotcha. But it's a secret. Yeah. Yeah, like you could eat it on out of there. Get in there and bathe with them. First place. So y'all turn y'all stuff into the judge yet? Not yet. Fixing to turn in now. Fixing to turn in shortly. All right. What it smells well, like? Smell like a winner to me. Smell, smell like, like a winner. Like dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOF. The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. <laughs> Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. got two more to cooks over here. Let's get the names and where they're from. Uh, James Madea, Jr., Donaldsonville. Roman Falcon, Pierpoint. Yes, indeed. Now, y'all got y'all got the rabbit sauce pecan going out here. Yes, sir. Rabbit now, sauce uh, how much pounds of rabbit you got in there? We got seven rabbits. Uh, they deboned. So oh, you don't have to worry about the bones. I guess they're about... I don't know, 10 pounds. Or gotcha, so. gotcha, gotcha. Now, y'all been out here early? Y'all got started early? Uh, I got started about 6 this morning. From the color of that gravy, I can see you didn't just start. No. no. <laughs> now, uh, for people that don't know out there how to cook a rabbit sauce pecan, why don't you give us a little overview on uh, a little quick lesson on how to cook a rabbit sauce pecan? Well, all I do, uh, I saute my onion. Get all my onions sauteed. I saute them first a little bit, and then I, I throw the rabbit in there. My onions, all my seasoning, you know, first, then I throw okay. a rabbit, and uh, I saute them together, and then I start putting my uh, my tomato sauce, my roux, put the water in it to get it to boil, uh -huh. to get it thick, and we season it gotcha. to taste. Okay. And uh, that's, that's the way I do it. And then about how long? Does your sauce a become? A good sauce become, you want it three and a half to four hours. And it's gotcha. a good sauce become. And then everything should be tender and falling apart. Tender, falling apart, and but well, this one. Looks like you can tender and falling no, apart that, already that's right That's going to be right. Now, what's the what's your secret ingredient that, that, that you put in there that, that, that makes your stand out a little bit more? Well, I don't have a secret ingredient. I just use seasoning. Yeah. And uh, I just... Put the seasoning to my tea. Now you've been cooking this recipe for a long time? For a long time, since I was about 17 years old. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've done this before? Oh yeah. All yeah. right, man. Pretty good? Oh yeah, I think it's pretty good. Ooh. 
We need smell a vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> About ready to turn into the judges, so it's yeah. it's crunch time. Oh yeah. Good luck to y'all. Thank you. All right, y'all found some more cooks out here. Y'all gonna recognize this fella. Let me get their names and where they from. Kyle Blanchard, Pierre Park. Jason Shirley, Pierre Park. Brennan Shirley, Pierre Park. All right, now y'all got a good team going here, local guys. Uh, what you cooking? Got wild hog sauce pecan. All right. Now you got to get out here early to start cooking up some wild oh, hog, yeah. huh? Oh yeah. Um, now, for for the people that don't know about wild hog sauce pecan, tell tell me a little something on how to cook a wild hog sauce pecan. Uh, first thing you want to do is take your meat and you want to sear it. Make sure you get a good sear in your meat. Uh -huh. Then you you got to make sure you end up cooking it for a very long time at a low heat. You know, once you get your gravy going and all that. And add a little sugar to the end of it to get that ah, tang out. Get the wild out. Get that tang out of the uh, tomato sauce, and that's good. Gotcha. Now, uh, how long does a hog sauce become usually take to cook? It all depends on what size hog you got. Uh, I think we got a 80-pound hog or 90-pound uh -huh. hog, something uh -huh. like that. And then gotcha. We've been cooking it since about 7 o'clock. Uh, how you feel about it? Oh, I think it's a good sauce. All right, bro. Well, good luck to you. All right. Appreciate all right, thank it. You. Thank you. All right, Kyle, we didn't talk about this one earlier. Now, this is a uh, baked tilapia with the crawfish cream sauce. Yeah. That's and you got crab good. in there, too. Got crab in here, too. Now, we didn't talk earlier about it because it don't take as long to cook this one. No, it's very simple. Uh, you got w heavy whipping cream, butter, and Philadelphia cheese in it. Oh, yeah. That's got to be good, bro. With, with uh, all your seasoning, crab, and crawfish in there, that looks really, really nice. I don't think I've ever had this, but I'm dying to taste it. Shut the front door. That's good. That's good, bro. I think you got a winner there. I hope so. <laughs> That's very good, y'all. You can taste the crab in there. You can taste the onions. You can taste the crawfish. And yet, still taste the fish. Possible winner right here. All right, y'all. Got two more cooks out here. Let's get the names and where they're from. David Oakland, Pierre Port, Louisiana. Benetton Flair, Pierre Port, Louisiana. Kennedy Oakland. Uh, from Pierre Port, too? Yeah. All right. Now, what y'all cooking, man? Turtle sauce pecan. Turtle sauce pecan. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, where'd y'all get the turtle? Where'd you buy it from? David David caught the turtle. He's All right. a, He used to be a turtle farmer back in the day, and uh, I guess he had a few lines, and... Uh, Cut some, some wild turtle for us. Turtles are getting harder and harder to get. I, I used to find turtles all the time, but I'm a, I haven't found one yet this year. But David is a turtle man. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, uh, tell me, for, for the for the people that don't know how to cook a turtle sauce pecan, can you give me a little quick overview on, on uh, how you cook your sauce pecan? Well, you got you got to start with your roux, just uh -huh. like any other thing, you know, onions, bell pepper, a few right. other little secret things, and uh, get your roux going, and uh, from there, you know, you add your water. A little bit rotel, a little bit, you got to zig and zag, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, do you have a secret ingredient that you put in there? That, 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 no, that, that, that's a secret, you know? It's all, everything's labeled, nothing, uh, no secret, everything's... Uh, okay. Now, you've been cooking this same recipe for a while? Oh, yeah, about 18 years. Really? Really? Yeah. Gotcha. Now, how long does it take your sauce pecan before you're done? About four hours. About four? Gotcha. All right, man. Well, you got it smelling awesome right here. How many pounds of turtle meat you got in there? 15 pounds. Oh, uh, everything come out all right? Oh, yeah. That look good. Look good. Hopefully to see y'all at the podium. You too. First place. <laughs> You're not first, you last. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all found three more cooks here. Let's get their name and where they from. Okay, Audrey Grew. From? Bell, Bell River. Uh, Audrey Grew, the third from all Bell right. River. Chris Bro from Pierre Park. All right. Now you got the, uh, what you got going there? Uh, this turtle meat. We, oh. uh, looking it down before we add it in there, we can use the water. For the, we'll for make the, a sauce. turtle sauce pecan. That's a lot of turtle. It's about 80 pounds. Man, who caught all that? I don't know. We bought it. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, we bought it. And uh, this is another big roux here. Yeah, it's a big roux with 14 pounds of flour. Man. Y'all plan on feeding a lot of people tonight. I'm sure. Normally Hope it, so. all, it all goes. Well, that's good. That's good, y'all. Well, y'all doing a fine job out here, and I want to thank y'all for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank y'all.
My name's Daryl Rebear. This is Kenneth Landry. This is Kenneth Landry. How y'all doing? Doing great. Fantastic. We had to sneak behind all the carnival rides to get back here and see y'all back yes, here. But I, I could smell it way over there, them onions cooking. We in the trenches back here, but getting the job done. I see that. It's all, uh, it's all part of the activities that uh, helped our, our uh, church parish be successful every year. Yes, know? sir. Plays a major role in our success as a church parish. Now, uh, how much y'all selling those hamburgers for? You know? I think they're $4 a burger. That's well $4. worth it. That yeah. looks like some good quality ground meat there. Very, very much so. So you get the smothered onions on it with the ground meat? Hold it any way you want. All right. <laughs> That's what I like. Well, thank you. All right. Y'all enjoy it. Thank y'all. Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement, is bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. This third generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites hog cracklings, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on site butcher has all your specialties smoked tasso and hocks, andouille, meat sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche Sausage. It's a wonderful thing. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center, an authorized Hustler, Bobcat, and Toro lawnmower dealer. Specializing in service, support, and satisfaction. Come see the wide selection of new mowers, ports, string trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and much more. Our home center features hardware, feed, outdoor cooking supplies, hunting gear, and everything for the do-it-yourself homeowner. Come take a short country drive to the hidden jewel of Livingston and experience real professional knowledge and health. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. I got two of the ladies here in charge of the best thing going, the sweets. Let me get your name and where you're from. Major Zumo Pierre Park. Karen Morales, Pierre Park. Now, did y'all cook some of these? Not me. You didn't? You I did? Didn't. Which one you cooked? This <laughs> one? Pineapple. Man, that, that looks <laughs> really, really good. I bet it won't last long. I hope not. <laughs> you better cut it in little bitty pieces, maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now is the time. Give me a drum roll. We have Cajun Living and Cooking LLC videoing us today. So you're not going home empty-handed.
That is the wow hall. Right? Congratulations, bro. Oh, thank you, dude. First in wild game, second in seafood. And last time I talked to you, you was winning some crawfish balling contest, too, I seen. It seems to happen that way. Man, y'all doing good. That season in rocks, bro. Oh, Congratulations oh, yeah. and a thank good you. job, fellas. Thank y'all. Thank you. All right, y'all. It's been a great day out in Pier Park, y'all. Met some really good people, had some really good food. We even made it out here to the, they call it the Virgin Island. This is where the Virgin Mary stayed. and. Uh, one of the big hurricanes that come through, everything out here was tore down, and the Virgin Mary stayed. So it's something that I had never come seeing out in Pierport. Lots of things to see in Pierport. Y'all got to get out here. And thank y'all for watching Cajun Living in Cook. Hey, I hope y'all liked the show. Uh, during these hard times right now with the coronavirus, uh, things are going to get better. And together we're going to be able to uh, fix this, you know. We're going to go back to normal soon. And when things do go back to normal, I want y'all to let us know your events coming up. When things are coming, give us a call. Uh, I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll see you next week.